let's say you're given this type of problem. This is just an example. Uh, another empirical example. Now, let's say you're given this. What is the obvious difference here with the values I'm giving you? They're in percentages. They're in percentages. So, step one now, a little different. I, I mean, you won't have to do this after I show you this one time. You'll just be able to do it. But let's say that you know you're given percentages here. That means that's just kind of a ratio for you know phosphorus to oxygen. Uh, if you're given percentages, you can assume that you have a hundred grams of a substance. You can assume you have a thousand or a million or, or five grams, whatever. I say though, always assume. So we'll say sort of step one. Okay, I'll just assume. 100 grams of compound. What does that mean? That means that if you have 100 grams of this, how many grams of it are going to be phosphorus? 43.7. So if you have 100 grams of phosphorus, then 43.7% becomes 43.7 grams. Same thing goes with oxygen. So, please be aware of that. I mean, it's not meant to be any big deal. It's just, I'm just showing you this so that you'll remember to do it from here on out. Now, FM double please. Thanks, Hans. Oh, here's for you. I was like, I forgot. All right. So, uh, yeah, go now. Okay, go. Now, let's continue. So, step two. Step two is the same as before. Convert to moles. So, take both values, convert to moles. Numbers would be oxygen is so that's oxygen's mass and then phosphorus's mass. I don't actually know that one off the top. Yeah, no. I'm just saying for why we assume it's a hundred grams. I'm saying that since we're just given percentages to start with, you can you can just decide that you have however many however much you want it's just to do the problem to solve for the formula. It's not like saying you actually have 100 grams. It's just saying to make it easier for you. You can just say, if I have 100 grams of this, then this is what the masses would be. In short, it's just saying if you're given a percentage, simply turn it into grams. That's like the short version. Okay? Now, we get this, and we should end up with uh, some, some number. What is it? 1.41 here. And again, that's good because your grams cancel out. Here, your O's cancel out. Notice, I don't know if you did this or not. Notice, oxygen here, what did I write it as? Is it 32 or 16? 16. It is 16. It is not 32. It is not O2 because it's not by itself. It's in a compound of phosphorus and oxygen, so it is not O2 in this case. So you only use 16, not 32. I don't know if anybody did that or not. but uh, So what does this one come out to be? 3.52? No, leave it just like that. That's okay, that's fine. Step three, convert to moles. Or, pardon me, don't convert to moles. Divide by smallest mole value. Listen to them talking about atomic number next door. I should make you guys do that again. Now, uh, divide by smallest mole value. So, which one's smaller, obviously? Which which number is smaller? Thank you, 1.41. If I give you a number line, you know 1.41 comes before 3.5. Anyway, uh, then let's actually do that. So we've got O, we've got P. Actually, you know what? To not confuse you, I'm going to keep it in the order that it was given to us, P and O. Sorry. Just so there's no confusion. 
So we've got uh, 1.41 divided by 1.41. That gives us obviously 1. And then 3.52 divided by 1.41. What does that give us? I have a pretty good idea. 2.5, right? So 2.5. Now, does that make sense right there? No, no. No, it doesn't. Because... Can you ever write, I mean, could I write this compound right here? You ever seen one of those? No. No, you have not. There's a reason for that. You don't do it. So, instead, we have to add another step. So we have to add another step. And that step is uh, pretty simple. It just involves basically, okay? Well, yeah, you're going to multiply by 2, but I want to just make sure you understand. It's now, basically it says, convert to smallest whole number ratio. And by smallest, I guess you could say simplest. Simplest whole number ratio. So it just can't be a whole or a decimal. Now, obviously in this case, I mean, there's not a lot of thought that's got to go into this. You can just see, I mean, if you've got 1 and you've got 2.5, I mean, what do you have to, you know, what do you have to make them into? Multiply by two. Multiply by two, because that'll give you here, that'll give you five. What will that give you for P? Two. So then your formula, your final formula is P2, O5. Now. What questions do you have on this? I'm, I'm actually, this is where I'm going to stop with examples. So are there any questions? This is it. I mean, these are the kind of problems you're going to get. Now, it might not always work out so easily. You might not have, like, P205 exactly, you know, where it's going to work out so simply. And I'm going to show you a few of those next.